Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at an exercise or quasi CPA simulation that deals with consolidation, including intra entity transaction plus deferred taxes. I am sure these topics are my students' favorite topics, right? All these topics combined in one example. That's not an easy task, but we're going to go ahead and deal with this appropriately. So here we are dealing with a parent and a sub where the parent owns 70% of the sub. And we're going to be computing the income tax expense as well as the income tax payable, including any deferred taxes. Now, the parent and the sub, they cannot file a consolidated return because the parent only owns 70% of the sub. In order to file a consolidated tax return, you need to own more than 80% and the the, the corporation has to be a domestic corporation. It doesn't matter, less than 80%, they have to file separately. Here's the data for the parent company. They have a separate operating income of 600,000, intra-entity gross profit, including an operating income. So this 50 is included here, and this is from inventory of 50,000. Dividend received from the sub 35,000. They did not pay any dividend, and the tax rate is 21%. For the subsidiary, they made a profit operating income of 200,000. That's obviously before paying taxes. Included in this amount, 40,000 of intra-entity gross profit from inventory. They did not receive any dividend and they paid 50,000 of dividend of which 70% went to the parent. And the tax rate is 21%. So first we are going to compute the income tax expense, income taxes payable for the sub before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my cpa material is aligned with your cpa review course such as becker roger wiley gleam miles my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics my resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So let's go ahead and get started. For the sub, their operating income is 200,000. We're gonna multiply this by 21% and they have to pay taxes of 42,000 now. So this 42,000, is income taxes payable because they have to write a check to the IRS. So simply put, they have 200,000. We don't deduct the intra-entity profit because it's included. They're filing separately. It's not deferred. Therefore, we pay, we are responsible for 42,000. Now we have to figure out how much of that 42,000 is basically payable for the current taxes and how much of it is payable for future period. Why? Because remember, we pay taxes on that intra-entity profit. Well, the intra-entity gross profit is 40,000. So 40,000 times 21%, 8,400. So what happened is this. Of this amount, of this 200,000, we have 40,000 that is, that's going to be taxable later in a sense that it's an intra-entity profit. However, we pay taxes on it now. If we pay taxes on it now, we satisfied our income tax. Basically, we prepaid the tax. We prepaid the tax. Well, that's going to give us a deferred taxed asset of 8,400 as a debit. So we have to pay 42,000 of which 8,400 for future period, and what's left is 33,600 for the current income tax. Now you might see it in another income tax course or in your CPA exam course, where they show you income tax expense dash current, and they will say this amount is 33,600 income taxes payable 33,600. Then they will debit the third taxed asset, which is this account here, 8,400. And then they will credit income taxes payable, 8,400. So that's another way of showing you this. To show you there is a current portion, this is the current portion, which is 33,600 
33,600 and we have a deferred portion of 8,400. In total, we are responsible for paying in total notice 8,400 plus 33,600. So this is the journal entry that the sub will make. Now, what else do we have to know about this exercise? Because remember, we have to we have to compute also this journal entry for the parent company. Now, here's what we know about the sub. Just kind of since we are we're going to keep going with the sub. We know from the sub that the income tax expense is 33,600. This is basically the income tax expense. Therefore, if we take operating income minus the inter-entity profit minus the income tax expense, it's going to give us after income tax for the sub of 126,400. Now, from this amount, we are going to pay dividend of 50,000. Remember, they pay dividend of 50,000. The dividend comes from net income. Well, what's left is undistributed earnings in the sub 76,400. Now, we have to also go a step further. Of this amount of 76,400, which is basically retained earnings of the sub, goes into retained earnings, 70% of that is that of the parent company, 53,480. In theory, since they own 70%, they are responsible for, not responsible, they own 70% of this undistributed earnings, which is retained earnings of the sub. So this is the parent share. Just make a note of it. I'm going to show you where this number, where we're going to, where we're going to be using this number later. So this is what we have to compute as well. Now, let's take a look at the parent company. The parent company, they have operating income of 600,000, which is coming from here. They received dividend from the sub of 35,000. Now, since they own, since they own 70% of the sub, they'll get something called dividend received deduction, which is called DRD, dividend received deduction. And what is this deduction? It's think of it as a phantom, as a as as an phantom means a fake deduction. Basically, the government gives you that deduction. So simply put, since you own 70% of the corporation, you add the income, then you will deduct 65% of that. Now, if you own more than 80%, you can deduct the whole thing, the whole 35,000. But the tax law now says it's 65%. Now, the tax law could change, but that's what the tax law now. It's called DRD. DRD stands for Dividend Received Deduction. It's a deduction given by the government. So we'll take 600,000 plus the dividend, minus the dividend received deduction, it's going to give us taxable income of 612,250. We're going to multiply this by 21%, and we're going to come up with a tax bill of 128,573, and this is payable now. Payable now means we're going to have to credit income taxes payable. Whoops, let me go back. For this amount, 128,573, we're going to credit income taxes payable. That's the income taxes payable. That's fine. Now, also what we did in this in this problem of that amount, of the amount that we included in income of the 600,000, remember we had 50,000 of intra-entity profit. Just like with the sub, the intra-entity profit, you have to pay taxes on it. Now, it's basically a prepayment. So therefore, of this amount, there's 50,000 of intra-entity profit. So times 21% will give us the third taxed asset of 10,500 because we prepaid our taxes on that intra-company profit. If we consolidate, we don't have intra-entity profit because it get canceled because we did not consolidate. Now we pay taxes, we have a deferred taxed asset of 10,500. Therefore, we debit the deferred taxed asset 10,500. We're not done yet. Remember what I told you about the undistributed profit. We have an undistributed profit of 53,000. Remember I said I highlighted in yellow so you would remember this you would remember this number. Let's see if I can basically bring an audit. So here what we have to do is to take this 53,480 and do what? And basically take it to the parent company. Again, if the parent company gets that dividend, they will get 65% of it as a deduction, dividend received deduction. As a result, they're going to be left responsible for paying 18,718 for dividend times 21% equal to 3,931. This amount here is their deferred tax liability because in the future, in the future, here's what we're saying, in the future, you will get this amount in dividend. Of this amount, you can deduct 75%. You're left with 18,718. You're responsible for paying 21%. 
that's in the future so you are responsible for 3931 that's your deferred tax liability therefore you credit your deferred tax liability of 3931 so here's what we did so far we took care of let me just highlight those let me just put them in a different color so you see so i already showed you how we computed income taxes payable I showed you how we computed the deferred tax asset. I showed you how we computed the deferred tax liability. At this point, the deferred tax expense is a plug. Okay? But here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. It, I want to show you. I want to make sure you understand it. Now, if you are not comfortable with the deferred tax asset, the deferred tax liability, go back to my intermediate accounting and look at those lessons. I have like 10 lessons. It's not an easy topic. But this is advanced accounting. It's not only advanced, it's advanced with consolidation and deferred taxes. But the point here is you are familiar with this. But anyway, you paid, you are responsible for paying 128,573. So this is your current portion. This is how much you are responsible of paying. Because notice it's a payable. Of this amount, of this amount, you are deferring 3,931, which is basically you are responsible for paying that later. Why? Why are you responsible for paying that? Remember, because you have undistributed earnings from the sub and that undistributed earning, you are responsible for paying taxes on it. Therefore, you book your liability. Also, what happened is this. So it's 128,573 plus 3931 plus this amount. Then you prepaid your taxes on the on the inter-entity profit. Remember, you had 50,000 of inter-entity profit and you paid your taxes for it now. It's included in this. Therefore, you deduct 10,500 and that's gonna give you your income tax expense of 122,003, which is, as I told you, it's a plug. So income tax expense is always a plug when you have the deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability. So this is the entry that you make for the parent company. Again, I'm not going to say this is easy topic, but I'm not going to say it's difficult. Why it's not easy? Because here what you have to know is consolidation, how to deal with intra-entity transaction, and how to compute the third income tax asset, the third income tax liability, income tax payable, and income tax expense. There's a lot going on, but this is an advanced accounting course. And as an accounting student, you should be competent, capable of looking at exercises like this and be able to solve them. I don't think you would receive something like this on the CPA exam. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Maybe the new CPA exam, I'm not sure, but the current one, you don't see something like this. But if you do, now you know how to, now you know how to deal with it. Be confident, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs that cover this topic so you are more confident when you see questions like this. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.